Welcome to Christian Warrior Training. My name is Keith, and today we're going to talk about what gun you should probably carry when you're working on a security team at a church. Now, so if you have a passion for protecting others while they worship and you love Christ, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe, hit like, hit follow, make a comment down at the bottom because it lets the algorithm know that we're important and that other people should look at us and take a look, and it, it just helps us all around. All right, let's get into it. So when I took over training at my church's security team, we would do our annual range qualification, but we do other range training as well. But during that annual range qualification, I would see people show up with some pretty crazy guns. Now, I didn't see anybody show up with a high point yeet cannon, okay? But I saw some equally bad choices for pistols that people brought with them. And it was a little concerning. And so I wanted to take a minute to just talk about what's a, what makes a good gun and what doesn't make a good gun. Now, obviously, when we talk about this high point yeet cannon, I bought this for $100. And yes, it's cheap, but the manufacturing is horrible. In fact, the first time I took this pistol out, I got a malfunction in the first magazine. It has not let me down. It has malfunctioned every single time I shoot it. And of course, when there's an active shooter, that's not what you really want to be carrying, right? I do see people carrying trusty revolvers. Now, all these weapons, they've been cleared uh, off set and then brought on here, but we're in the 11A9 tactical armory right now. So a revolver. Now, I started my career with a revolver. In the academy, I got issued this gun. But I'm here to tell you, in the academy, I realized it's a horrible gun to carry when there were autos that I could be carrying. Why? Now, unless you're Jerry Micklick, that's fine if he's on my church security team and he wants to carry a revolver no problem knock yourself out but you have six shots then you're gonna have to break that open dump it hopefully you have a speed loader and you can throw that in there close it up and then get ready or pull them out of your pocket and put them in there one at a time certainly there are people there that are they're watching this that are taking offense to a lot of things that i'm saying and Stand by, you're going to take offense to a lot more of what I'm, what I'm going to talk about. Where, do, where does my experience come from to talk about this? And uh, I, put on, I created and put on both basic and advanced sniper courses. Now, sniping is definitely different than church security, but to give you an example, every class I taught for that sniper school, somebody went on to shoot somebody operationally. So I have a clear understanding of what you need when a combat situation arises. Now, what I do see a lot of is I see a lot of 1911s. Now, this is the only 1911 that I have that I can show you. And there, this is a, a Holt 1911A1 that was manufactured in 1943. It still has US Army stampings on it. Certainly, you're not gonna carry this on there, but it's good for demonstrative purposes. Now, there are some really good 1911s out there. STI, which is now staccato. They make a great 1911, and when I get enough money, I'll probably buy one. It's a great gun, but you have to shoot a lot to get used to a 1911, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. One of the problems that I don't like about 1911s, and I, I want you to think about this about, there's also Springfield Armory makes their XD that has the same thing where they've got a rear, uh, this safety on the grip, the grip safety. Now, if you're not holding this perfectly right, then it's the trigger's not going to go off. So I've staged this. It's clear. There's no. This is a totally clear weapon. The safety is off, but I can't pull the trigger. So I've got to get a perfectly great grip to make that work. Now the problem is when you're in a gunfight, you you may not get that perfect grip, and your gun might not go off. I know that from experience watching people on the range with Springfield Armory XDs. I see lots of people that are like, I don't understand why my gun is not working. It's like, because you don't have a perfect grip because you're rushing through this. And that's what's going to happen in real life. So I'm not a fan of a grip safety. There's lots of other guns that have grip safeties. I'm not a, this is, we're picking a combat pistol. We're going to combat. And I know a lot of you are like, 1911, it's won two world wars. That's right. It was a hundred years ago too. So it's time to move on. Okay. A striker fired pistol works best for being in combat, okay? So is an example, the SIG 320. It is a great gun, I love it. You don't have to have the perfect grip to make it go off, okay? It's very simple to use. You 
pull the trigger. Now, one of the downsides okay, of the SIG 320, because we're going to be totally transparent, there have been a lot of discharges. In fact, the best term I heard for a SIG 320 is it has shake awake. And that's because uh, a lot of these are going off in holsters. And you can go do a, a search on YouTube when you actually take the... Now, I am a I am an armor. I'm not a gunsmith, but I am an armor. I, my department sent me to all sorts of armor schools to learn how to work on all these guns and to take them apart and put them back together. I don't do gunsmithing where I'm manufacturing my own parts or anything like that, but I do have a good understanding of the internal workings of these guns. And one of the issues that I think is happening with the 320s is unlike a Glock, which we'll go over the Glock in a minute, on a Glock, there's a little trigger safety on there. Okay. With a SIG 320, you don't have that trigger safe, that little trigger safety on there. So when it goes into, let's say you have a Serpa holster, which if you have a Serpa holster, please stop carrying the Serpa holster. It's a horrible holster to carry for duty and combat purposes. And we'll go over that again in a minute. Now that I've totally offended you, stick it out so we can explain why these things are bad. We're going to pause just for a minute because I realized as I was editing this and putting it all together, I forgot to talk about the Serpa holster. The reason why you don't want the Serpa holster is you've got that little button in there to pull it out and I'll try and put a photo up there so you can see what I'm talking about. But that little button that you got to touch, that malfunctions a lot. I've seen a lot of those break to the point you can't get the gun out of the holster, which obviously is bad in a gunfight. I've seen detectives that have had those that they are just sitting in the car, they get up and all of a sudden they can't pull their gun out of their holster. It's pretty unnerving. I've also heard, not seen, but that, so I did see those things malfunction, but I have heard that Serpa holsters that, of people that have gotten dirt, other fouling stuck in there, that it's made the gun discharge. Now we talked a little bit about SIG 320s, or we're going to talk about SIG 320s and some of the failures with those SIG 320s. A lot of those happened in Serpa holsters. So that makes me a little bit wary that there's been a lot of those things that have happened in there. They're cheap plastic that uh, break apart pretty easy. And the most important part, when you get into a gun, this is the most important part, okay? When you get into a gunfight, you're going to lose your fine motor skills. All of your blood is going to leave your extremities and come to your core to give you a little bit more blood so you can have a little bit more cardiovascular activity, protect vital organs. There's a bunch of physiology that happens in there, but when, you, when the blood leaves your extremities, you're going to lose fine motor skills. And pressing that button to pull the gun out is a fine motor skill. So we have been telling cops forever and a day, stop using it. It is a substandard holster. Holsters in general are for another day. But I just want to put that out for you guys so that you know. And I, I didn't want to miss out on information. All right, back to the regular show. I think what the problem is happening is that when, when this is staged and ready to go, as they put it in their holster, if something catches that trigger, it's going to go off. Is that happening? I don't, there's a lot of debate. There's some lawsuits going on right now, but I still carry a SIG 320. I like it. In fact, I like it so much, I've got two, okay? The ever, the ever faithful is a Glock 19. Probably one of the best concealable handguns that's out there on the market. This is my everyday carry pistol. I love it. Uh, it doesn't have the, or it has a trigger safety, unlike that SIG 320 but it is an all-around fail-proof gun that I really enjoy. Now, why are we going with striker fire? Let's back up for a minute. Why are we going striker fire over all you guys that love 1911s? Well, remember what we talked about? You got to have the perfect grip in order to make this thing go off. You don't really have that problem, right? All you've got to do, like all I'm doing is I'm holding it with just two fingers and I could I can still fire it. Not that you're going to fire it with two fingers, but it's nice to know that you don't have that perfect grip. You've fallen on the ground, you've been shot, that you can still return fire if need be. So one of the th some of the things that you want to think about when you pick that pistol is you want to, I, I prefer an optic, make sure that you have silencer height sights. So that way you can co-witness in case your red dot goes down. But I really like that red dot. It, it doesn't make me a better shooter. It makes me faster. And it, as you get older, a lot of us that serve on church security teams are, tend to be a little bit older. It's a lot easier to pick up that red dot when you're in combat than it is if you were just trying to line up your iron sights. I also prefer putting a flashlight on there. Surefire and Streamlight uh, make great flashlights for or pistol-mounted weapon lights. They work very well. You need to think about having a light on your carry 
gun in church because the lights can go out. I mean, if I'm going to go active shooter on a church, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kill all the power and then go do what I'm going to do so that way people can't see. So good guns to have would be ones that you see in service with reputable police departments and ones that you see in service with the military. SIG, Beretta, Glock, Smith & Wesson M&P. I don't have a Smith & Wesson M&P here. I haven't bought one yet. I plan on buying one in the near future. It is a great handgun as well. You can get the old SIGs. This is a SIG uh, 220. It's in 45. We're not going to get into the big caliber debate right now. Look, 45, 9 millimeter, it doesn't matter. Just don't go 380, 32 ACP. Don't, don't do anything like that. Certainly 10 millimeter, 357 SIG. Just use a good handgun round. How do you pick that handgun round, 9 millimeter versus 45? Go look at the data of officer-involved shootings. Hit ratios, look at uh, what damage was done to the suspect at all. It'll all lay out. Now, this SIG 220 is not a striker-fired pistol. It's got your traditional hammer on there. I did replace the trigger because I hate SIG triggers in the 220 series or in the whole, you know, 22X series. But I do, I do enjoy that gun. It feels good. It is well manufactured. I carried a SIG 226 for 15 years before I carried a Glock for another 15 years. Both of them have done well. Now, next up is what size pistol should you carry? Now, this is my duty gun. This is the one I carried on SWAT for a good 15 years. And what I like about it, it's a big gun. Can you carry it concealed? I've seen people do it. I got a friend that carries one with a compensator, extended mag, and the appendix carries that thing. Good on him, he can do it. Uh, for me, it's a little uncomfortable. I, I don't want to. It's a little ungainly. Now, if you're working church security where you are open carrying, uh, which if your church does that, then so be it. I would go with something like a Glock 34. They make uh, SIGs that are same size as this, like a Legion or something, or the Legion series. Coming, the reason why this is a little bit better is the farther apart your sights are, the more accurate you are. So you can see on my Glock 43, the sights aren't that far apart, right? So this isn't gonna be as accurate as this, right? Besides the sights, longer barrel, there's a lot to go with it. It's got a little bit more mass, easier to handle. I do see a lot of people work in church security with something small like this, you know, the, the little tiny SIGs, you know, a Glock 43 is a Glock 43X. I don't carry this for church security. I carry this when I'm just worried about defensive capabilities. Now, look, when you're at church, you're going to go on the offense. You are going to go seek out and destroy the person that's trying to harm people at your church. I would not want to carry this when I'm on the hunt for a bad man. At a minimum, I would carry something like, you know, the SIG 320 carry. I would carry the Glock 19. I would carry something along the lines of something like that. Now, when I'm wearing shorts and I'm just running down to the store and I just got to worry about me and my wife. This is what I carry, a Glock 43X, super tiny. I can literally throw it in my pocket if I wanted to, but usually I just appendix carry that thing. But when you get into it, it's funny, I interview guys when, after a gunfight, and I would ask them, how did your gun hold up? I had a friend who got in a gunfight with a SIG 3, or with a SIG 22. This is a 45 caliber, I can't remember, magazine capacity. I think it's like eight rounds. He went through all of his magazines. He carried two extra mags. He went through, what, 24 rounds of ammo, and, and that was it. And he said he was praying to God he had more ammunition. And after that gunfight, the department gave him his gun back, and he went out and bought a SIG 226 and 9 millimeter because he had more ammo. Now, I've learned from his lessons, and I agree with that. The one thing I don't like about the Glock 43, besides you can, you're, you can be accurate with it, but it doesn't hold. Now, a lot of people will say get like shield magazines. You could buy a shield magazine for a Glock 43X and it extends it up to 15. I see those malfunction a lot. When you start doing aftermarket things to your pistol, you start to have more malfunctions. If you keep it OEM, if you keep it as the factory gave it, you're less likely to have any kind of a malfunction. All of the malfunctions I see at the range are from people that modify their Glock, their SIG, their Beretta, whatever it is that they're shooting, they modified it. Okay. Now, the other thing is, is you can spend $3,500 on a staccato, but if you have no training, you're going to be horrible and you're not going to do very well. Okay. What I suggest is you spend about, I spent, I bought this as a police trade-in. I spent 
$399 for this handgun. I bought the sight and the flashlight. I think total invested, I've got $600 into this gun. Spend the money. If you, let's say you're a computer programmer, you're not going to go buy a Google Chromebook to go do your programming. You're going to buy a super nice computer because that's your tool. If you're a carpenter, you're not going to go down to Harbor Freight and buy all your tools at Harbor Freight. Sure, you might buy one or two, right? But all of your good tools are going to be quality brand. It's the same thing with pistols, right? Spend the money on a Glock. Spend the money on a SIG. And remember what we've talked to you about. I would buy, if, if I was to give you my advice of training a whole bunch of shooters and teaching them how to shoot and making them good, I would suggest you go out and buy a Glock 19. And I know a lot of people are going to, you're either, you're either going to roll your eyes or you're going to be like, yeah, right on. Because it's like talking about Chevy, Ford, or Dodge pickups, right? But the difference between all three of those, they will all get you to where you're going, okay? If you buy some Chinese electric pickup, you're not going to get to go where you're going. And that is a high point, Canic, Dagger, any of those other guns. Buy a quality handgun. Okay. I know you guys are going to have it out in the comments. I know that people are just going to hammer away. Go ahead, get in, get in there and, and, uh, and hammer away. I'd love to hear what you have to say. One last thought though, and that's rifles in the church. I think rifles in a church are a good thing. Not Obviously not sling it and carrying it. I do bring this to church with me. It's locked up in my truck inside of a bolt in my truck. They're going to have a tough time picking, uh, getting at it, but I also have a lot of training. I've been to patrol rifle school, patrol rifle instructor school, submachine gun school, submachine gun instructor school, plus, plus precision rifle, precision rifle instructor, you name it, proficient with a rifle. My suggestion to you is before you do rifles in the church, which what I recommend is to have a safe in your church security room that you can gain access to it to. Your pistol is good for fighting your way to your rifle. Why do you want a rifle in the church? Because if somebody comes in with a rifle, I don't want to fight them with this. I want to fight them with this. You also have surgical accuracy. Am I more accurate with this Glock 43 or am I more accurate with this AR? The other thing is, it goes back to if you're going to purchase a rifle for the church, you got to have training. You cannot expect that you're going to be some good old boy. I've been shooting since I was six and I'm going to take it out and I'm going to, I'm going to shoot that bad guy. Again, spend some money on some quality training, go out and get trained on how to use it, and then have it in your church if you need it. This, how I've set this up, I mean, I've set this up if I have to go combat in a building. It's exactly what I, like what I had on SWAT. I got a Thunder Beast Arms uh, silencer, and everybody's going to hammer me in the comments because you, I called it a silencer. That is the legal definition. The slang term is suppressor. You got your Surefire light. I've got my infrared laser. I may or may not have night vision that I could use. I've got my EOTech that I could use under night vision. And then of course, I've got a modern rifle. This one is a Daniel Defense. It's a DDM4 with an 11 inch barrel. Ammunition selection, picking all these different things that go on with your rifle for another or with your pistol or your rifle is something for a whole nother video. I just want to give some guidance to new church security team members about how to select a pistol. Again, my recommendation is if you're brand new, Glock 19, I pick Glock 19 because people shoot better with it. They shoot better, it's simple to use, and I see people's scores improved and become better gunfighters with it. I've seen people show up with a Springfield XD and go shoot at the range and they do okay. I give them a Glock 19, give them some training, and they smoke every session that we put them through. So that's all I've got for now. Comments are going to be spicy. I can tell already. Go head out to the comments. Leave a comment. It's good for the algorithm. Hit the like button. Share this with your friends and with your security team. And do me a favor. Pray for the channel. Pray for me. Pray for the channel. Pray that the people that need to see this, see it. Get educated so they can protect their flock. That's all I've got for now. You guys stay safe. Remember your ABCs. Always be caring.